wonders were done by the apostles. Come on, holler at your neighbor and say, signs, signs. and wonders. And wonders. You know, I, I, I'm a really good mix of like Baptist and Pentecostal yeah, and yeah. I got a really good mix and a good heritage steeped in both. But I remember a time, I remember a time where I would come to church and I would see things like the sick come to church come on, yeah. and they would leave healed. Yeah. 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 I've seen in my 29 years of living many demons cast out. I've seen strokes brought under subjection of the authority of the Holy Ghost with no signs following. I've seen AIDS patients, my God, delivered with all high T cell count and no trace of it in their bodies. I'm talking about in my 29 years. I've seen many signs and wonders. As a matter of fact, in the, in the text, one of the things that brought the people to the apostles and brought the people to the church was the signs and the wonders. Say, to when was the last time you saw a sign or a wonder? It's okay, I feel my helper. When was the last time that you saw a sign and a wonder? I'm not talking about just in this communal body, but in your personal life. Last week, y'all, I can testify, I saw a sign and I saw a wonder. The Lord kept my wife from wrapping around something that she should have been dead. But I saw a sign. God, the next, I saw a wonder. This year, I saw my baby sister get married. You don't know her history, but I'm telling you, I saw a sign. And I saw a wonder. Saints, I just got a car for my wife yeah. with my credit score. Yeah. Now, now you may not be able to identify with that, but Lord, I saw a sign. <laughs> a sign and a wonder. You know they may not. You know, cause y'all so car, some you know folks that they don't want to get with you on that. Like everything they got is so you know good and boozy. So then, you know, again, uh, uh, I seen a sign, correct? And I saw a wonder. And I'm very thankful for that sign and that wonder. But not only in the things of the flesh do we need signs and wonders, but in the spirit we need signs and wonders. You know, many people hate on us tongue talking, folks. You know, they hate on us jumping and jiving and jerking, folks. But there's power sometimes. There is power in that shape. Yeah. Uh, there's many days I'm playing that organ and the Lord shake me and quicken me and I leave them keys because there, there's power. Yeah. We're not just doing it for show form or fashion, but we want to see signs and we want to see wonders. We serve under a bishop that has an apostolic anointing over his life. And I can truly say from the things I've witnessed in him and through him, the prophetic utterance that we have in this house. Come on, yeah. We have a very Corinthian church. Everybody here is very gifted. We have a church that functions in signs and in wonders. But many, you know, the world needs to come in and see what true anointing is. What true unction of the Holy Ghost is in signs and in wonders. And many times we think that it should only be in the leaders. No, but you know, the, the scripture says, the scripture says that we've all been given the ministry of reconciliation. That makes all of us what? Minister. I'm not praise God. I'm glad y'all are with me. I said we've all been given the ministry of reconciliation. That makes us all ministers. You know, uh, uh, Ephesians 4 and 11 says that he gave some apostles and he gave some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What did he give them for? For the perfecting of the saints and for the work of ministry. Now, I'm going to tap this and it's going to make sense to you. Uh, 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 a lot of people are in offices and they don't have giftings. I'm going to park here parenthetically and then I got to move. Uh, 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 let me just clarify. Let me clarify. Give me two seconds. Uh, the New Testament teaches that there are only three offices in the modern church. There is the bishop, there is the priest, which is a pastor or an elder, and there is a deacon. Those are the three offices. Now there are five giftings. Those are the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Many of us have offices. We have titles and we have lofty chairs, but we don't have no gifting. There's no way in the world I would take on a title of elder or pastor or deacon and not 
have one of them five gifts. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to give you this clip of verse and people may not be catching this all. Yeah. 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 A lot of us have giftings, uh, but we want that office so bad that we can't even we can't even operate in our gifting. Every office needs a gift, but not every gift needs an office. I don't care how well you prophesy until you get that prophesying in under subjection into the house, you don't need an office. I don't care how well you teach, how well you preach, how well you lay hands on the sick and they uh, recover. If you ain't got subjection to the authority of our sick man, then you need to sit your uh -oh. in. Grandma said you're happy here. You're happy here. We're talking, we're, talking, we're talking about credible apostleship. The apostleship can only be credible once it's been ordained and set forth. All throughout the New Testament, you never see anybody going on their own. You see them sent by another. Jesus sent the twin. When the Holy Ghost came, he sent the 120 in the upper room. You know, uh, you need some credibleness to your apostleship. Not only must we have Christian discipleship, and not only must we have common fellowship, but we must have credible apostleship. Credible apostleship.